Welcome back to this particular class uh, which we will talk about behavioral and cognitive method. So, in last class what we did we get a uh, broad idea that what are the types of tools and techniques available uh, when we talk about cognitive ergonomics. So, today what we will do we will go for the detailing of each technique as far as possible as much as possible and we will uh, in some cases we will have some examples and then you can practice it at your home and then you can get back uh, to us if, if something is required to discuss further. Okay. So, as we mentioned in earlier class uh, that specifically when we talk about general analysis method of cognitive ergonomics, then there are four major techniques or tool rather we say we can use for our data collection or to fulfill our objective we can use these methods to uh, get our data or to understand the situation. So, observation, interviews, verbal protocol and focus group. So, let us start in detail about the observation. So, as I mentioned in earlier uh, presentation that uh, it is mainly three types direct, indirect and participant. So, what is observation? Again let us recall some points. So, observation is the procedure to determine the data on errors and performance time of people with evidence to perform a task. So, it is very important over here is the task. So, when somebody is performing a particular task, we really need to understand what are the varieties of error or uh, difficulties they are facing. And this is really possible when we go for this observational uh, method. So, observation is very, very useful for uh, any uh, physical work recording and then you know uh, sequencing that particular task also the interaction between the workers and machine. So, observation could lead to people to demonstrate a knowledge of how a product ought to be used. So, it, it actually tells you that how the product need to be used rather how do the person is going to use it. Okay, so, it's it's like it's, it's, it tells you that how the product you are going to use it. So, how my uh, the, the product that I am going to test with you, how you are going to use it. So, observation process raises issues of the ethics of conducting definitely the observation. Observation is the most obvious way of collecting performance data on people to inform user certain design ok, user centered design. So, how people are using it? So, we get information about this. So, it is very much useful uh, method in the field of design of course, apart from that industrial designers uh, like you know industrial engineers, occupational health uh, worker like the, the people who are working in the field of occupational health and all they also can use it. It simply requires one to ob one to observe the user's performance and how they are performing that particular task. So the sequence, steps, methods, uh, behavior, the posture, the you know the way they are taking the task ahead. So all these are minute observation that they can do, and using this observation technique, they can record it and can use it for next. Uh, next course of action. So, the observer should present the participant with the device and the list of tasks to perform. So, if it is like you know there is a there is a product and I want to um, understand how the person is going to use that particular product. So, what we will do? We will give the uh, product to that particular subject and we will ask the subject to use it in a sequential manner and we will observe it. Okay? 
the observer can sit back and record that as, you know various aspects of human device interaction that those interaction which are of their interest. So, it is it happens that when there is a product and there is an user they do interact. However, every interactions are not important for the observer. So, for observer there are some objectives, there are some uh, motive to do this particular study based on that the observer will decide which points to be noted. So, the technique how do we collect data it is very very important. So, typical measures are execution time and any error observed. So, so, so how long it is taking to execute a particular uh, task or particular work. So, that may be a concern from, uh, for, from the researchers perspective. Also, the kind of error they are doing, uh, subjects are doing while doing this particular job. So, these are the major area uh, or major um, variable that normally people look for. So, the, the observer will draw up an observation sheet for use in data collection prior starting to this particular task. So, they keep a data sheet ready. So, they keep on observing and pointing out that. Filling normally how do we do uh, what of what happened when we go for a data collection it becomes very difficult for us to you know give some you know vocabulary comments ok that becomes very tedious that becomes very difficult and also it becomes very difficult for someone to uh, retrieve that data and you know understand data. So, what is important over here is make a table ok point number 1, 2, 3, 3 whatever the observation you are actually interested you make a point of it and then keep on uh, no addressing them. So, tick uh, obs observation point 1 give a tick, observation point 2 give a tick, observation point 3 if it is there then tick, if it is not there do not mention it. So, that way the data collection becomes much easier and the person get a very nice data and which can be translated very easily. Also, it helps your co-researcher to understand your data because sometimes if we go for our own handwriting some, some type of data then it becomes very difficult for our co-researcher to understand that and you know uh, interpret that data. However, if we go for this tabular form it becomes very easy for everyone in the same group to understand that data. So, it is very easy to do that. So, video observation can be a valuable tool. So, uh, normally what um, experts suggest that when we are going for an observation uh, study uh, we put up a camera and we do the observation you know we do the recording. Once the data is being recorded let us come back to the laboratory and analyze it. So, there is always a ch chance for us to replay the same sequence and if, if anything to be um, noticed we can notice it. So, there is less chance of um, losing any data. This can greatly reduce the data analysis and uh, data collection time specifically collection time because you know what happens the, uh, we, we need not to go to the field repeatedly. So, we have uh, because you know human data collection is very very tough. So, you know getting consent from the person who is going to be your subject and then uh, you know taking their time uh, collecting data it is it is very difficult job always right everybody of us uh, definitely accept that. So, if we go for the video recording it helps you to reduce the timing for the data collection. However, as I as we were saying that observational tool this observation tool is very very useful and it is uh, it's, it's a preliminary tool that we always use in the field of design in the field of ergonomics uh, in, in, the, in, in this uh, situation. However, there are some limitation because this particular tool gives you a very basic idea about this particular uh, job or particular task that you are looking for. So, the main concern with observation is the 
intrusive intrusiveness of the observational it's, it's very intrusive in nature so that 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 is the major limitation of it so the behavior of people can change the result purely so suppose i i am a person who is going to observe the second person if the second person knows what i am going to do how i am going to do and he or she himself change the behavior purposefully then it becomes very difficult for me as an observer to get the real data so any influence from the uh, from the subject from the participant may change the result so depending on the objective or aim of the study we choose which type of observation need to be done one can be done with uh, after discussing with the with the subject so it's the subjects knows that you are going to observe them you are going to get data from them then something some type of data comes if you don't allow them to know what exactly you are going to do and you know you know in a in a in a different manner you are going to collect the data then it is called the covered observation like you know you are not allowing the person to get the inform you know get, uh, know the information that you the person is get, going to get observed okay so those cases the data can be different however there are always a chance that the subject influence the data okay so people who are being observed can bias the result so that is again it's it's a very uh, you know troublesome point for uh, for this particular tool and this way uh, the way in which the data are recorded could you no know, compromise the reliability and validity of the data so the researcher if they are very novice they don't uh, know how to collect data if if that is the case then it may happen the quality of data um, may be you know compromised so we should be very careful when we are using this type of um, method to to collect some information as i was saying that when um, uh, when uh, the person who is very new to this particular subject and not very much experience then what happen uh, th they collect data in different way okay so those cases uh, the, the reliability and validity of this particular tool becomes less so it is very important for us uh, when being a researcher we we use this particular tool we know the situation very well and we know our aim and objectives of this study very well once we know these two situation very correctly then we can definitely avoid these types of limitation partially okay so so as i is mentioning that you know there are limitation so there are some uh, method or there are some steps that we can follow uh, to uh, you know to 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 prevent that so it requires careful preparation so as i mentioned that if i am a no, novice um, Uh, researcher then what will happen i may not have experience of doing the observational study so before i go for actual present uh, or actual observation i should do some kind of pilot study so anyway pilot study is very very important for any any kind of uh, data collection here in observation also pilot study is very important so observable activity is to be determined so here it it is very important that activities okay the activities when i am talking about i am going to observe so what exactly what activities i am going to observe that is very important so let us first find out before i go for observational study let us find out what are the activities i am going to observe so list them out okay activity number 1 activity number 2 activity number 3 like that you let us uh list them out once i have the list then it becomes very easy for uh us to get those information from the observation 
So, the characteristic and size of the sample population is, is specified to ensure that they are representative of the population, the result will generalize because if the sample is not really representation of the population, okay, this sample selection, sample selection is very, very important. If sample is not really a representative popula uh, representative of the population, then later when we are going to generalize this particular observa uh, result of the observation, it becomes very difficult. So, what we should do? We should follow, uh, we should do, uh, um, uh, we should give a thought before we start this particular process. We, we measure the errors, so through writing and speed of performance, how, how, uh, know, how frequently, how, what is the speed of my recording, how I am doing it. So, we should do that. Also, the, um, you know, we should look for the behavior of the person, or behavior of the uh, subject. So, if we can do that, then it, it actually help us to get quality data we should also decide how the reliability of the data is to be checked. So, beforehand we can have some kind of testing methodology ready, so that once we have the data we can check the reliability. So, um, uh, two way normally we can do recording of two observation are compared. So, uh, same situation two recordings uh, uh, from the recording. Uh, two observation can be compared. So, researcher 1 and researcher 2, they can compare their data. That way, we can check the reliability. The activities are videotaped and con conducted a reliability analysis on a sample of the videotape by comparing it with the direct observation. That is also possible. So, one directly on the field, one at the laboratory and then compare them. So, then it becomes very easy for us to understand that my data is correct or not. Okay. These are the way how do we get quality data. Also, when conducting the observation study, it is worth spending some time beforehand. So, as I was mentioning that it is not only pilot study, uh, the field we should visit frequently so that we really know the situation in detail before we start any kind of observational study. So, that also the person who are going to be observed, we should get acclimatized with them, then it becomes easy for us to get the data. So, this way we can have some quality data. Definitely, this is very easy tool. So, it has a few ob advantages. So, it provides objective information that can be compared and ratified by other means because you know the result of this particular uh, study like result of the observation can be an input of other method. Okay. So, it is it's very, very useful uh, method and can be used to identify individual differences in task performance. So, there are um, operator 1, operator 2 and operator 3. Okay. So, same task is being performed by every operator separately. What are the differences are happening and what are the causes of those differences? How, how the system or how the design is going to influence those differences? We can have definite result from this particular study and it definitely help us to improve the system uh, once we have the data. This particular uh, method gives us the real life insight into human machine interaction that is very important because uh, we actually see them working. Okay? We see the operator working. So, it gives a real time uh, information. That is, uh, that is the advantage of this particular study. However, there are some disadvantages, we will go very quickly. So, 
uh, it is a very resource intensive because you need lot of time, you need manpower to you know you need uh, sources to go to the field, get into the field, get get an you know um, clearance that you should collect, you will be able to collect data. So, it is very resource intensive, intensive uh, effect on observed party. So, the subject who is going to be observed maybe there are some impact so we should avoid such cases here there are sometimes difficulties lab data and field data control data and ecological validity so these cases we get some disadvantages does not reveal any cognitive information directly here it is very important however i'm teaching this particular method in the cognitive section Still I want to mention here, it never gives you direct information about the cognitive load, cognitive uh, theory or anything. This the data, the uh, result, the information received from this uh, particular method, we may use it for other study and then we can get the information related to cognitive. Uh, uh, cognitive uh, workload or cognitive um, load or many other thing. Okay. It never gives you direct information about the any cognitive information, any any in not a single direct information. Okay. So, it gives you data in terms of time, in terms of error. It looks it is these all are physical data. So, these are some disadvantage. Now, let me explain you the process. It is very simple. Okay. So, a frequency count of specific event as I mentioned, we should have a uh, uh, no sequence of events that we should tabulate beforehand. So, a frequency count of each event requires an experimenter to perform physical action in response to user command. The commands are used via verbal or control. Okay. So, you can you can give some verbal instruction or you can have some control. The aim of this study is to assess frequency of functions by users or by machine. So, both it is possible. So, here it is a small example, you know, ebook study. Suppose we want to do an observation for the this. So, let us first find out what are the points we are going to observe. So, here in this particular example what I did I pointed out four major tasks. One is turn the content page one, second is into the index, third is to the next page and then previous page. What I did I made a tab table over here right. So, all the actions I noted here and the frequency I noted here from observation. Now, these numbers, okay, these numbers are very important. If you want to check the reliability of this particular tool or reliability of the method that you used, you can have two, three co-researchers with you and with the same videotape or same uh, uh, this uh, specifically from this same video tape, what you can uh, do? All the researcher can count these number separately, okay, and then can check that how these are different. If these are different in in large, then definitely somehow it has gone wrong. You should perform it once again, or you should have a better understanding about all these activities separately and again redo it. If it is not the numbers, the, the countings are not very different, then your result is correct. You are doing it perfectly. Okay. So, that way you can use this. Okay. Now, let me give one more example. So, the relationship between the action and the state is necessary to consider. So, which control produces which state? So, there may be some control, there may be some causal uh, no, impact of it, right. So, how they are connected? 
So, this requires another frequency count. So, maybe you can have some more uh, detailing of it. So, I will uh, give you uh, example with the ticket vending machine, okay. ticket vending machine and so how they are connected with the time and category. Okay. So, I will take you to the example first. So, you will be uh, it will be very easy for you to understand. So, what I have done over here in a it is a automatic ticket vending machi machine. In one case, there are three subjects who gave extra money to the vending machine and got the change back and collected the ticket or somewhere it is failed or the, the process of buying ticket being aborted. Whereas, in other case some subjects again I took the same numbers uh, subject 1, 2, 3 like uh, 3 subjects they gave the exact money which is required to buy the ticket. Some cases it was successful, some cases uh, it is unsuccessful, some cases they, they, they aborted that particular uh, buying process. Okay. So, this is the data. So, in first case you have given the extra money and changes has been given back to you. So, you know it is it's like subject number 1, 2 and 3 did the same thing. So, these are the required time 16 and all are in second okay 2348 okay here it is successful successful and last case it is aborted whereas in the when somebody has given you the exact not you to the ticket vending machine the exact money whereas subject number 8 9 and 10 first case it's like you know they could not complete the process so they had to about that particular process. In the second case successfully they collected whereas, in the last case like you know subject number uh, subject number 10 they, 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 they could complete the process however, it took lot of time repetition. Okay. Maybe the understanding was not correct about the information received from the uh, display and again acting upon it. So, repetition. So, maybe here we can we can say the person who were um, using this particular vending machine either were not experienced or not able to understand the command given by the machine. So, from all these data from all these observation we can have very clear information that how the machine and the, the operators are interacting with each other. So, before I started this particular experiment, so we, we checked this uh, physical activity what we are going to record. So, put the coins and money buying the ticket collect the change. So, these are only 3 component that we are going to record and from that only we could derive this particular table. So, before we start our experiment we should always able to know that what exactly I am going to do. So, 1, 2, 3 these 3 components we are going to observe. There may be many other extra things are involved. However, we are not going to observe them or record them. Okay. Maybe we can keep the recording as a videotape. However, for our data analysis, we are not going to look for them. We are going to neglect them. right? So, this way we can have our data ready and later this data can be treated, can be you know experimented uh, or used for, for, for the different other purposes. Clear? So, uh, observational method we have some related method also. So, observation is a core method that relates to the to many other method like you know uh, content analysis, hierarchical task analysis that we are going to discuss definitely. It is a very important tool hierarchical task analysis. Last class also I was discussing this right. Uh, so, these all tools are connected to the observational method fine. So, what 
what are the instruments or what are the ex things we required uh, when we do uh, observational uh, technique or observation uh, recording. So, if we go for the direct like you know we are collecting data at the field itself in that case we need pen and paper. Uh, whereas, if we want to collect the information and come back to the lab and do the analysis later in that case we need a video recorder and um, of course, always before we start any kind of observational study we should follow the human ethics. Okay? So, uh, ethical permissions are always required before we go for observational study. Okay. So, if you conclude this observational study, it appears that it is very easy tool, it is very initial tool, initial method to collect information about that particular uh, situation, about that particular work space. Okay? So, work activity, performance, task. Right. So, I am using so many terminology because these are the commonly used terminology. Okay. So, we can you, uh, you, we can start with and this way this particular method actually will give you some objective that will take you further for more detailed analysis. Okay. So, it is a very initial tool and it will help you for more exploration. So, let us go for the next tool which is interviews. If you have any question for questionnaire uh, observation study, you can definitely put, it, put up in the, um, uh, in the discussion section. So, as I mentioned in, in the in last lecture that what is interview, how do we do, let us recall it once again. It is one of the very original method for gathering general information. Okay? It is it, very uh, gives you a very general information and has been very popular across a range of field. It is not only in the field of design, not only in the field of ergonomics, it is like you know in social science in definitely design ergonomics, uh, occupational health, then uh, industrial engineering, industrial management, these interviews are very, very useful tool. So, common perception about this interview are you know in employment and in the questioning of the witness. So, you are employing some questionnaire questions and you are getting the information from the person. So, they can yield the result in any situation where a person's opinion or perspective is very important for the researcher. Okay. So, suppose I am a researcher, I want to know about a particular incident happened in any industry. So, what will happen? We may go for an interview session uh, with those people who are the stakeholder of that particular incident or, or particular workstation. Right? So, once we get information, then only we can go ahead. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult to take any decision or any kind of measure. So, so, so uh, understanding the stakeholder views, stakeholders view are very important. So, interview becomes become a very you know initial and crucial tool for such cases. So, interviews are intended to elicit users or designers view about a particular task or system. It is multipurpose as I mentioned it is being used by many of them. So, it has multipurpose use okay? and even within the usability context. So, from a single point also there are you no know, several uh, several uh, views can come. So, applications include task analysis for human reliability assessment, uh, pre-designed information gathering, collecting data on product assessment, uh, maybe before and after trial. So, there can be varieties of use. So, inter is a tool which really help you in all these processes. So, major uh, advantages is it is a, a high degree of ecological validity. 
okay, it is very very high. Okay. So, to review a device suppose you want to review uh, you, you, you have a device which is newly designed. So, so, if you want to review it the researcher simply ask the user and um, uh, the, the inquiry can be you know perceived if, if it is required. So, suppose I have a new product I am going to uh, know or I am going to understand what is the perspective from the user I just simply go for the interview. Okay. So, the interview technique is very well documented with an abundance of literature for this particular method. So, uh, if you go for any kind of literature where interview is being used as a tool you can understand that you know it is a very primitive tool however, it is very very useful tool. The, this combined with the uh, face to face nature which is possible, but in current days we can have different way of conducting interview. So, it is very very easy nowadays. So, interview can be exploited at any stage it is very funny that or very interesting rather it is very interesting that you know at any stage of my design process at any stage of my research process I can introduce an interview. Okay. Wherever I need to understand the stakeholders view I need to understand the view from the users I can definitely introduce this particular tool and get information. So, in case of usability evaluation a user trial is implied before carrying out any kind of interview a partial prototype of the product under test should also be available because you know if you do not have the product you may not get a correct result from the interview. If end users are available for any case for any interview session then uh, the output uh, for that particular product should be available in that interview case otherwise it, it becomes very difficult for the, uh, for the subject to reply to the questions asked by the um, asked by the interview. Okay. So, these are the requirement basic requirement that we should follow when uh, we are conducting any kind of interview. Also we should understand also this, this particular point I mentioned in my last lecture as well that it can be majorly three types three var variety. Okay. One is uh, completely unstructured some are semi structure, some are completely structured. Now, this completely structured interview are very similar, I would not say same, however, it is very similar to, uh, to with the questionnaire. There are some difference, however, it is it appears very similar. So, from a completely structured interview, definitely we can derive some questionnaire. Okay. So, based on the, the nomenclature we can understand completely what is completely unstructured, semi structure and completely structure. I described it in my earlier lecture. So, if we go further with the procedure of interviews, it says that interview the person who is taking the interview should be granted an exhaustive user trial with the device under analysis and then interviewed for his or her thought. Otherwise, it will be difficult for someone to get the information. Each section okay, uh, when we are doing the interview each section of the checklist should be used as a prompt for asking question. So, as I mentioned in the earlier lecture that you know you should have specific that you know uh, uh, some thought process should be there for any case. Okay. So, that that component should be very very clear if that component is not clear then it becomes very difficult to uh, interact or get the information from the subject. The interviewer should direct the question questioning from open question um, normally that is the procedure that we follow and slowly it goes for the close end questions. So, so when if it is structured interview we should write the, those questions in this fashion. If it is unstructured we should be more experienced how do we derive the questions on the spot 
in this fashion okay the fashion should be similar the pattern should be similar it can be structured it can be semi structured or uh, unstructured however the pattern should be starting with the open and slowly it will take you to the close end questions if the interviewer feels that any particular section is irrelevant okay to a particular device he or she is studying then they can easily exclude it okay it may happen that you know it's a completely unstructured interview and uh, the dialogue has gone some other direction after collecting the data the interviewee like the researcher has a full right to ex eliminate them from the data okay it is is it is possible so the professional wisdom of the interviewer can be an advantage for this particular technique because if 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 they are um, very much experienced if they are very much professional then it becomes very uh, easy or becomes uh, the data becomes very reliable so this is a kind of um, a flow chart that you can keep in mind while uh no doing this particular interview however this is not really the uh, exact one to be followed however this is the no general uh, you, you we can definitely uh, follow it okay so i am taking uh, two three seconds pause you can look at this particular uh, flow chart and understand uh, how the flows goes when we talk about interview how do we start and how do we stop the interview okay so let us move uh, towards the advantages so uh, techniques this particular technique is uh, very familiar for most of the respondents so it becomes very easy for researchers to introduce this it is very flexible in nature and uh, when we talk about the structured interview it gives you an consistency so you know also the uh, the detailings are there so it becomes very uh, very easy for our uh, for the researcher to extract data from this type of uh, structured interview however there are some disadvantages so you need user trial initially as i mentioned for the observational uh, method also that you really need some trials before you go for the actual data collection here uh, the analysis is really time consuming because interviews we get several varieties of information if specially it is semi structured or unstructured so how to extract data from that interview is very very difficult so uh, it takes lot of time it needs needs experience okay from a single interview i uh, being a novice uh, person in this field may get only one or two information however an experienced person may get lot of information so it it's it's very uh, it's very you know uh, skilled based uh, job skill based task so if you are not experienced enough to conduct interview and analyze them uh, then data may not be very reliable so it demands the characteristics of the situation may lead to misleading that result it's definitely if uh, the process is not uh, or this the participants and the use, uh, the researchers are not on the same page then it may have happen that result may mislead the uh, the researchers okay so we should be very very careful uh, while conducting this type of interviews and collect you uh, know uh, analyzing the result uh, from the interviews so i will take some example so in a particular case so what it says that interview output based on an analysis of using a typical in car radio castle machine okay so here we are talking about in car radio castle machine so in this particular case we had three major section that we talked about in the interview there may be many things 
Okay. However, based on our aim and objectives of this study, we selected only three. First one was related to the visual clarity, second was the consistency and third one was the compatibility. Okay. Based on that, we had some sections and we derived our questions only here. Okay. So, if it is structured, semi-structured or unstructured does not matter, but our all questions for this particular interview, you know, uh, uh, the float around only these areas. So, first one was visual clarity, then second is the consistency and then compatibility. Okay. So, if something else comes during the interview process, we have easy option to exclude them. Okay. It may happen that the subject who is responding to, uh, towards the question uh, on this field may introduce some new information. Those information for this particular research may not be useful. However, maybe it is useful for some other research or it can lead to some other direction. But for this info, for this case, we have very specific three points, three agenda points. We will be discussing that only while analyzing the data. However, if it is a semi-structured or unstructured interview, we can have information, we can gather information, we can uh, record the information. However, we will not be able to use it. Okay, that way we we can use our interview data. So, some related method also I will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the questionnaire. So, interviews are very closely related to the questionnaire as I mentioned. If it is a structured interview, it is very very similar to the, uh, to the questionnaire. However, there are very specific differences that we can discuss in some other forum. So, questionnaire can take many forms but they can be uh, thought of as an extreme form of uh, structure interview as I mentioned. So, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Let me tell you the advantages of questionnaire. It can be completed on paper by the participant, very important thing. So, you give the questionnaire, they will answer you on the you know, paper itself or nowadays in the through internet you can collect data. So, enabling huge sample of data collection with relatively minimal effort on the part of the experimenter, very important. Okay. Whereas, there are some disadvantages. So, it is concerned the inflexibility of the questionnaires and the inability to pursue interesting lines of inquiry or follow up on the answer that may be unclear. Okay. Whereas, this is possible in the interview. So, clearing the doubts that is possible in interview whereas, in the questionnaire it is not really possible. So, observation can be used in conjunction with the post trial interview output to corroborate the benefits and the problem with the products particular design whereas, the interview reveals subjects opinion and perception of the product usability. The observation really demonstrate the actual errors and performance time when the person is using that particular device. So, now you can understand how the observation, interview and the questionnaire, these three things are connected with each other. Okay. We can have based on the requirement, based on the aim and objective of my study, I can decide which component to choose and where to introduce it. Okay. Hopefully, you understood it. Okay. So, what we need if we want to collect information through question uh, through interview. So, the interview is relatively a very simple tool and can largely be conducted as a pen and paper exercise. However, in current scenario, whatever interviews we conduct, we try to do a video tape so that it becomes very easy for us to analyze it and there is less chance to lose any data. So, audio recording also possible, uh, video recording is also possible. So, in summary we can say 
the purpose of interview is to gather key basic information about the circumstances and give a concise guide to its content. It is very important, it gives, uh, gives a very precise information about that particular content and it is qualitative research technique. So, how do we use the data for our statistical treatment or for our further data analysis? We should be very clear before we introduce this tool for our data collection. Okay. So, let us move to the next which is known as verbal protocol analysis. Okay. What it says? The purpose of verbal protocol analysis is to make valid inferences from the discourse content. Very important, okay? Valid inferences, okay? Which is really valid for our objective. So, from a discourse content, we should find out these valid inferences. That is the agenda for the verbal protocol analysis. So, in human factor application, this discourse is a written transcript. Normally, it is a written transcript can be found either within the individual words or word senses, phrases, sentences or themes. It is possible. Okay. So, we can have combination, we can have single, single. Okay. So, the analysis proceeds by extracting this valid content and then categorizing. Okay? You have to do a categorization. Once we find the valid content from all this, we should categorize them and define those categorization scheme. Very important. Okay? So, we have a set of words, set of sentences, phrases, uh, theme. From that, we have to uh, create the baskets. We have to create the baskets, and then you should uh, you should understand understand that where these what do does th this basket mean? What this basket mean? Okay, you have to correlate how they are connected with each other. So that is verbal protocol analysis. So this analysis is a means of data reduction. Very important. It's a means of data reduction of keeping the content derived from the verbal transcript, it is uh, reducing the size that is why it becomes manageable, it becomes easy for you to handle the data. So, th that is the major purpose for the verbal protocol analysis. Little more about it, so uh, verbal protocol analysis is used within human factor research as a means of gaining insight into the cognitive underpinning of the complex behavior. Okay? So, when, when behavioral analysis are there, we really need to understand what are the interconnections, what are the influences, what are the relations available. So, from this, uh, from this particular tool, we may get a direction. So, in human factor setting, verbal protocol has been shown to be a good exploratory method. Okay? So, it, it helps you to explore the situation, it helps to uh, helps you to explore the behavior of a person in a particular um, uh, setup. Okay? If you design the experiment very carefully, it may give you an optimized reliability and validity of the situation. Okay. So, within the context of exploring this particular hypothesis and conducting studies in a naturalistic setting, verbal protocol analysis can be extremely useful. So, it is depend how you are going to analyze the data. If it is being, exp you know, it is being used in the context exploration, then it becomes very, very uh, useful for the researcher to get a further lead. Definitely, it has some advantages. So, it provides rich data source in quantity and in content. As I mentioned, it summarizes the data, right? 
it, it reduces the size of the data. So, it gives some uh, content very valid and solid content. So, the process lends itself well to examining the behaviors in a uh, naturalistic setting. So, you know in a particular workspace when suppose somebody is really working in a particular working setup, original setup, natural setup. So, how the how the behavior is, how the informations are uh, we are collecting from their behavior. So, it becomes very, very uh, connected to the original set uh, works uh, setting, right. So, this tool actually help us to get such data and once we get some uh, natural data like which is very much connected to the uh, original work setup. The implementation of the design or implementation of the intervention becomes um, very useful and very unique. Okay. So, one setup to another setup it is very unique in that case. So, content and outcomes of thinking can provide an insight into cognitive process of course, it helps because we are actually analyzing the behavior whereas, in observation it is very very uh, you know physical in nature you know you really count the numbers of the movement, you count the num uh, frequency of any particular action or error whereas, uh, this verbal protocol how person is using this it, it gives a uh, change uh, understanding about the perception of the situation, understanding about the situation. Uh, of course, sometimes who are the expert in this particular field will give you excellent data whereas, as I mentioned uh, the novice researcher may not be really good in this field, you should uh, practice it, you should uh, uh, follow many research papers or research um, uh, uh, studies for this and then you get skilled. Uh, once you are skilled then definitely you can have good data using this particular protocol. However, there are some disadvantages, um, it is a time consuming protocol. So, it needs lot of time also analysis also very much time because not only data collection um, data analysis also very time consuming. It provides uh, verbal commentary and that can change the nature of the task especially if certain processes are not normally verbalized. Okay. So, some skilled work, some skill job which is really difficult to narrate, uh, to difficult to explain. For those cases, this protocol is not a good tool, we should not go for this type of tool in that case. There are uh, theoretical issues definitely, it is being mentioned in different literature that it is really not, uh, not really valid tool in some cases. So, it is absolutely depend that which situation you are going to um, analyze or evaluate using verbal protocol, you please check back the similar literature. If literature says yes, in such cases verbal protocol is useful, then go for it, otherwise it is advised that you should not use this verbal protocol. So, uh, it is very, very important that you should understand what is the background of this particular research area. Okay. So, uh, depending on the occupation, depending on the activity, depending on the, um, uh, depending on the task that you are going to, um, uh, 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 that you are going to evaluate, you are going to use verbal protocol or not, you have to decide. Okay. So, it is not that everywhere it is useful. In some cases it is very useful, in some cases it is not. So, you, you before, before you choose this tool you should go for the literature. So, this is the process you know uh, I mentioned it as a step 1, step 2, step 3. In step 1, uh, so what you do you actually check the device scenario, then instruct instruction and uh, you know you give training on that particular step. You you use protocol, then use the recording, you follow the re recording, once you collect the, the information. So, once you finish your this recording stage, what you do that here it comes the data reduction. So, 
So, once you have whole data then you start grouping them ok group 1, group 2, group 3 in uh, or maybe many more ok uh, some categories you do and once you do that using your uh, uh, the content of the uh, verbal protocol what you do you give the translation transcription ok once you give the transcription then you do encoding ok you give maybe you give some kind of nomenclature ok small uh, typical nomenclature you can give suppose I am talking about example I am talking about using a hand spray ok. So, how do I use it? So, when I am using it only pushing so in pushing uh, pressing maybe in pressing how I am going to do that. So, for all these detail you can have varieties of information you can group them and you can keep it as a single component. So, you encode them ok and later you can devise with the other data. Once you devise them you have group 1, group 2, group 3 like that you can find the relations relation with the group 1, group 2, group 3 or group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4 something like that type of relation you can establish. Now, here which relation to be established which content should be connected with which content it absolutely depend on the objectives that you have set for your research work ok. So, here there is no guideline that how do you analyze, how do you go for the statistical method ok. So, it is not possible. So, you have to have your own understanding based on that you can take this grouping ahead ok. So, you can have the small scale pilot study once it is done you can then analyze this particular data. So, this is the um, basic major steps that you can follow for verbal protocol analysis. So, I will give you uh, detail that what are the steps. So, first is the device or scenario what you will do involve some set task which is already set ok. Now, here it should be connected to your research a particular task scenario ok. A particular task scenario need to be framed properly and the operation of one type or different types of equipment or a particular system. So, you set the whole scenario initially then instruct and train the participant it is very important because if the participant do not know that how, what to do and how to do they will not be able to help uh, they will not be able to uh, perform the task. So, you instruct and train the participant correctly. So, the form of telling the participant what thing they should be talking about and informing them to keep taking even if what is being said does not seem to make much sense to them. It is very funny right. So, if they it, it, it says that it is not really very connected to them however, you should inform them yes this is the thing you have to do this is the thing you have to talk. So, experimenters should demonstrate the method to the participant initially showing them the desired form and content of the verbalization very important ok. So, uh, in which form they are actually looking for it they should inform it beforehand. Standard instruction and training should be provided to the participant. So, it is not that for one uh, participant 1 it is different and participant 2 it is different it should be standardized. So, before you go for the data collection you set all those things train the subjects and then you start the train means give the instruction ok then you start the uh, process. So, record the scenario how do we do that maybe audio recording with a time index it is possible uh, sometimes digital recording products also can be used. So, portable computers also sometimes useful uh, it can be helpful to simultaneously record video to 
back and up you uh, know uh, to the verbal uh, commentary it is possible. A good method is to collect the data digitally via laptop. It is very useful because nowadays it, it that is the way how do we collect data. Uh, other data of interest like eye tracking data or you know system telemetry all these things can be recorded simultaneously that will be objectively informed on exactly how the system is being used. So, you should inform that okay? it, it should be uh, uh, it should be informed to the subject previously. This can often be useful to counterpoint the verbal data supplied by the participant. Now, the step 4 transcribe the uh, transcribe that verbalization whatever is happening. So, how do we do that after cut collecting that verbal data? So, uh, participants you, you, is giving you the, the whole set the whole uh, narratives right. So, you once you collect it it need to be transcribed verbatim into written form. Okay. So, first is the audio recording or video recording right. So, uh, so you listen and then you will transform it. So, a spreadsheet can be uh, devised to do this particular process. The rate of uh, verbalization for relatively fast paced text can easily reach up to 130 words per minute. It is possible. Uh, however, it is not mandatory there will be some changes. A good technique for accurate and rapid uh, time indexing is pause the audio recording after hearing a section of speech. Note that particular time subtract 2 second type of verbalization at this new time point. So, that way you can do the transcript. Okay. So, then you encode it. How do you do that? Decide whether to encode word or encode senses or phrases or sentences or theme which one. So, based on the research objective research interest you can uh, encode any one of them. You should establish the conceptual framework for encoding this particular scheme. Devise the encoding instruction because you are not only the person who are going to use it may be your co-researcher also going to use it. So, you should give the device for encoding this in instruction and then complete the encoding. So, decide whether to encode word, senses or phrases. So, how do we differentiate them? So, if it is word encoding the occurrence of discrete word. Okay. If we are talking about only encoding the word, then we should encode the discrete word. If it is word sentences, then encoding the words with multiple meaning, a single word with multiple meaning. If it is phrases, then what we will do? Encoding the phrases that constitute a semantic unit. If it is a sentence, then encoding of what particular sentences refer to what or refer to something, some expression, right. So, that is very critical, the, this really needs your experience. Then is theme, encoding the meaning of phrases and sentences into shorter thematic units or segment. Normally, we try to go for this portion, this becomes very easy, like you know, you know thematic encoding. So, when we are getting the verbal protocols uh, the, the whole data, we try to uh, categorize them under small small theme. So, a protocol analysis based on the theme provides a richest and most flexible source of data as well as I, I, I was saying. It is very useful when we go for the theme and can be recommended as a starting point of next part of the research. So, so you know uh, theme is very, very important when we go for this type of data collection. So, then what we do? Establish a conceptual framework for the encoding scheme. The theme then have to be encoded according to some rational determined by the research question because you know you have pre-established research question. So, accordingly 
you have to set them according to that rationale you have to set them. So, the encoding scheme could be based on the established theories of mental workload or cognitive control or situational awareness anywhere right. So, whatever themes whatever um, uh, encoding you are getting you have to uh, uh, establish the, uh, you have to connect them with something which is already established ok. So, this involves so here uh, no you need to go back to the literature you have to connect them again repeat relook into it. So, this is this is a very detailed process ok it is it never happens very quickly. So, uh, beforehand you should learn some literature also once you have your themes ready again you go back to literature and uh, check for the different types of you know method or models available or not. So, this involves attempting to ground the encoding scheme according to some established theory or some kind of method or approaches ok. So, then what you do? You devise the encoding instruction how do we do that? The next step is to draw up highly defined written instruction for the encoding the scheme uh, because if you do not have that then it becomes very difficult in the next phase how do you take it further right. Given a length of time it can take to encode data of this particular sort these instructions should be constantly referred to and this in turn will help to ensure inter reliability reliabilities or within rater reliability. These same in instruction will be used for when inter rater reliability has to be established in the latter stage. Then you complete it, how do you do that? Uh, in, an encoding worksheet is produced at this particular step. So, earlier you are listing them, you are detailing them, here you are creating the worksheet. It should be determined whether the encoding categories should be Mm, uh, mutually exclusive or exhaustive ok. Mutual uh, exclusivity need not to be applied it is not it is not always and the theme can fit into as many encoding categories as defined from the written encoding instruction ok. So, it is it is very irrit you know iterative process you, you need to really learn it in detail ok. So, under this scheme the encoding is but very much exhaustive whenever a theme meets the definition described in the encoding instruction initially how do you encoded them the number one is entered in the relevant encoding box and then you start for 2, 3, 4 and like that ok. Now, you complete it. So, how do you do that? So, various computer programs exist to assist in encoding the verbal uh, transcript. So, there are different packages available here I mentioned few however, you may have your own as well ok. Uh, the next step is uh, devise the other um, uh, data columns after transcribing the verbal data against that time index and having encoded the themes the final part of worksheet consists of the other data column. This is an opportunity to note any mitigating circumstances that may have occurred during the trial it is very important right. So, you really get a detailed uh, view of it and that may have affected the verbal report. It is also may be useful to note different stages of task enactment or to tie up telemetry or eye tracking data with the verbal protocol because that definitely we do and we will have a lab practice where we will be really doing all this ok. So, how do we connect them or integrate them with the eye tracking system? How do we telemetrically we, we see them ok using separate worksheet column. Establish the inter and intra reliability and then perform the small scale 
pilot study. So, once you have all these things you really do a pilot study. So, what do you do? The protocol analysis procedure should be put to the test within the context of a small pilot or pilot run and this will demonstrate whether the verbal data collected are useful or not, whether the encoding system works or not working, the whether the inter and intra data reliability are satisfactory or not satisfactory. So, this pilot study definitely helps you to give an understanding your data process that the, the collection is correct or not and then you analyze the structure of encoding because what you did in the encoding process. Now, you have small groups right, you have reduced the data. Now, you can have an understanding and you can have the building uh, to, to those themes. So, what you do after conceptually grounded the encoding scheme by relying on established theories because literature you are connecting back to the models or theories available or the construct and having established in interrater reliability through the use of the encoding instruction and interrater reliability. First one is the intrarater and the next is the interrater reliability by employing independent encoders. Okay. Here you should introduce the independent encoder, the structure of encoding is to be analyzed. The analysis will produce a proceed contingent upon the research question at hand because you already have your research question how they are connected, but all analysis need to sum the responses given in each encoding category. So, you have 2, 3, 5, so each portion will have separate, okay. each portion will have separate group and this will help you to achieve by adding up the frequency of occurrence and which you can note it down for each group or each sub categories and that will help you to uh, understand the whole situation. So, this is an example first one device a scenario what we did performance of a normal driver in a driving simulator it is a example which is being uh, taken from a book. So, what uh, they have done here uh, instruction and train the participant. So, in that case the driver were instructed with the proper verbal information by instruction. Then second the entire instruction and experiment was recorded by the videotape. Then what the transcribe and verbalization how they have achieved the two second incremental time index the actual verbalization provided by uh, driver's viable uh, commentary and the encoding categories, event column and protocol structure. These were all illustrated and this is how all these things being recorded. So, you can give the numbering you know encoding like this and you can record them, you can you can you can say this one here, here here, here. So, like that you can have a data sheet. Okay. So, encode the verbalization, the encoding group was defined majorly here they did with the behavior, cognitive process and feedback. Okay. And uh, the behavior group were like driver's own behavior, behavior of the vehicle. So, they gave the nomenclature differently behavior of the road environment and other traffic uh, and cognitive process also perception, comprehension, projection and action execution. That way they gave the nomenclature okay, collected. Then again definitely what they did, they encoded the verbalization. So, what they did here, the feedback category offered an opportunity for the vehicle feedback to be further categorized according to whether it referred to the system or control dynamics. So, either system dynamics or control dynamics or to the vehicle instrument. Okay. So, how that is happening? So, that feedback 
uh, categorization happen. The cognitive process and the feedback encoding categories were uh, couched in relevant theories in order to establish a conceptual framework. The event column was for noting road events from the uh, simultaneous video log and the protocol structure was colored coded according to the road time being road uh, you know type of road like you know it is based on the terrain ok one travelled. So, uh, devise the data column. So, mitigating the event how it happened and stages of task en uh, enactment. So, uh, you know there are some related protocols from this verbal uh, protocol analysis we can have some related protocol of course observation is very much connected the modified uh, modification of this particular method and the addition uh, uh, addition of an ongoing verbal protocol will turn to the observational study so it's it's very much connected with each other. Also observational method or task analysis can be helpful in discriminating the theories, uh, specific scenario and the hypothesis that we are actually talking about in our research. Of course, eye tracking. Eye tracking is a very important instrument or a very important connected method that we can use with this verbal um, protocol. If we talk about the reliability and validity, reliability for the verbal protocol analysis is it is it's really high, it is very high because you know it's, it gives you quantitative data, it is very high. So, even using a theme based analysis, if you still if you are using a theme based analysis given a theoretical ground. Uh, encoding scheme and provide that the same encoding in, encoding instructions are used. So, it is it is very highly reliable. In terms of validity there is a still degree of debate in terms of um, uh, you know relationship between the verbalization and the content recognition ok. There, there is some kind of you know uh, difficulties and verbalization reflecting the content and outcome of the thinking are argued to possess theoretical validity and validity is also aided by ensuring some degree of construct validity. So, here lot of statistical uh, treatment you should uh, take up uh, to, to, to uh, take this particular uh, data ahead ok. Uh, tools you can understand. What are the tools are required uh, for this type of for this technique? So, uh, protocol analysis requires the experimental scenario. So, you should build the experiment beforehand and some means of recording the audio against this time index measure in particular seconds. So, you need uh, this type of setup. A uh, more efficient mean of conducting the analysis can employ digital audio or videotape as I mentioned earlier. Uh, sometimes uh, software based video players allow direct storage uh, uh, and uh, you know, access it to the latter half and it is the most uh, convenient choice of you know, transcribing the verbalization. Of course, uh, some kind of spread uh, sheet packages also is helpful because you really need to store the data. So, it is not a big deal, it is it's like very easy you can use your excel file to you know uh, collect those type of information. So, in summary we can simply say the verbal protocol can be used to understand how the operator perceives, operates and use a system product or space. So, the whole thing the whole concept you know uh, if we are talking about the uh, uh, if we are talking about the situation if we are talking about a particular workstation workplace or product analysis or system analysis we can really understand the how the operator is behaving how the uh, information they are perceiving. So, it is a very very useful tool in terms of cognitive ergonomics. Ok, till here uh, for today and maybe we will continue further in the next class. Thank you.